What's going on guys? Today we're going to take a look at how to add an external power button to a PC like this one in case you want to use it inside of an arcade cabinet or put it somewhere where it's hard to reach. Now keep in mind that this is really only necessary for a PC like this one, something from like HP or Dell that is more of a proprietary PC. If you have a regular PC that you put together or that isn't like a big name like this, it's probably just going to have regular headers on the motherboard and you don't need to do the steps that we're about to do. You can simply take the external button and just plug it in right to those headers. With that said, the only thing you're going to need for this is a screwdriver, flat screwdriver. Uh, the smaller, the better, the flatter, the better. Just like this one here. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is you want to remove the side cover. So to do that, we're going to pull on the latch and just pull straight up. And then you want to pull up on the CD drive right here. Okay, so here's a closer look. This is the CD-ROM that we just pulled up before. And ignore this here. This is actually the button we're going to be installing. I've already installed it, but we're going to go through it, so don't worry about it. You're not going to see all these cables here when you do it. Um, what you're concerned with here is this black connector right there next to the blue one. You will be pulling up on that, and that's the connector that we're going to be working with. Now, if you guys want to remove the entire assembly like this that has the that black connector, if it's easy for you to work with, you can go ahead and do that. I have a video, I'll link in the description, where I went ahead and took every single component out of one of these PCs so that you can see how to do that. But it's not really necessary. You have a good amount of slack right here that you can work with. Okay, so what we're trying to achieve here is replacing the cables that are on this plastic housing that are responsible for the power switch and we're trying to replace those with the cables from this new switch and the reason you want to do that is because you need these other cables that are on here plugged in these computers are very picky and if you remove any sort of like fans or USB connectors or anything like that it's gonna give you an error message when you boot up the machine again that's why it's necessary to do this uh, if you had a regular PC that you put together or that has regular headers that is non-proprietary like this one, you would just hook them up to the headers directly over here on the board and you'd be good to go. But with this one, we're gonna be doing it this way. We're gonna be removing these cables here. We're gonna be replacing it with the cables from the power switch. And then we put the entire connector right back on the board. So as you can see here, this is the new cable and this is the new button and this cable here all these, ex all these other cables are not necessary. They're responsible for the reset switch and LEDs and stuff like that. You don't have to hook those up. The one you want, the primary that you want is the one that will say power on here. This one says reset. This one says HDD LED. This one, I already removed it from the housing, uh, but you know, it would say power. And then this particular one, if you buy this exact one, you can just go ahead and copy what I did here. You have a white cable, a green cable, and then next to that you want to hook up these two, orange and yellow. Okay, and I'm going to show you exactly how to go about doing that. So because I already replaced the actual power one, we're going to use the LED as an example. And this is the exact same thing you would do for this power cable. So if we turn this around, I trace these cables to the front and I can tell that these, uh, this black one and red one are responsible for the power LED of the PC. So that one you can actually hook it up so that this ring here lights up. Again, this is optional. The most important thing is the actual power button, which is over here. And the only reason I'm showing you this is to show you exactly how you would go about inserting and removing the cables from here. So again, we use this flat screwdriver and what you're trying to achieve is you try, you're trying to raise this little plastic tab here so that it'll release the pin. Now be careful because these are sensitive, you don't want to break them. So just be careful and try to get the screwdriver under the tab. And once you raise it, you can go ahead and pull on the cable to remove it from the plastic housing. Okay, so you can see right there that I got it under the tab and I'm just raising it slightly. Now I can go ahead and take the cable and pull it out. If you want, you can kind of push down a little, a little bit so that it'll lock in the new cable. Now I'm going to do the same thing and I'm going to remove the black one. Now I'm assuming the red is positive and the black is negative, so just remember that. 
Um, it was these two first lots there, and the red one was on the right and the black one was on the left. And again, this is the same process that you would do for the power button. There you go. Pull it out, and there you go. So now these two red, these two red and black cables are loose. And remember, they were right here. So I'm going to go ahead and take the cables from the connector on the on the new assembly here, and I'm going to also remove them from the plastic housing. So that would be, I'm reading the labels on here. This is power, LED, and then the other one would be this one here, power LED, positive. So I believe it was positive on the right. So I'm going to remove it from here. Same process to remove them from here. There you go. And now it'll just snap right in over here. You're actually going to hear a little click. There you go. And now if you pull on it, it shouldn't come out. I'm going to do the same thing for this one. There you go. And now we're going to clip it right in here. And there you go. Cool. So that is the the power LED to indicate that the PC is on. Again, optional. And then this is the one that I had already done over here for the actual power. Now, the original cables that were in here are these two right here. These two white cables were originally in there. So I just removed them, same process we just did, and replaced them with these two. So after that, you basically go ahead and plug this back in. There's only one way it can go because one is a blank. So you plug that back in, make sure it's aligned properly and all the pins are engaged and just push down on it. And that is it. Now, the, again, these other cables are all extra. You do not need to plug them in. These you can leave like this. And this does come with a PCI bracket that I don't have right now, but you know, you would put the bracket right in here and then the cable can be routed through there to the outside of the PC, like so. Just make believe the bracket is there. And then you can put this wherever you want. And now you can use it to turn the PC on and off and we're gonna test it in a second here. Okay, so I went ahead and plugged in the power to the PC and now when I press this button, there you go, the PC turns on and you can see that the LED ring here around the button is on and is working. Again, that is optional. And by the way, since we're talking about power buttons, here's a bit of advice. Never hold down the power button to turn off the PC. Always tap it. That is a safe shutdown. When you tap it, the computer shuts down safely. It's the same as going to the start menu shutdown. If you hold it down, it is an improper shutdown and it could corrupt the operating system. All right, guys. So that is going to be it for this one. If you guys enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you guys on the next one.